Comic Boom. Hey guys, Comic Boom here to review Legion of Superheroes Millennium issue one of two. This is written by Brian Michael Bendis. This is his way of introducing us to, I believe, the Legion of Superheroes ultimately. Now this is only two issues long and so part of me wonders what the point of this is. I read in one of the solicits and it's been suggested to me that the purpose of this millennium series is to basically streamline the history of the DC universe. And so that's interesting. And how does Bendis go about it? Well, he focuses on the character of Rose and Thorn. Now, Rose and Thorn is a character with a split personality, Rose being the innocent woman, and then the other, her alternate darker self is Thorn. And, and when she ever she gets panicked or filled with anxiety or stressed or is in trouble, her the evil side of her pops out named Thorn. So hence you got the Rose and Thorn. Now this entire opening issue is basically Rose and Th Rose and Thorn uh, basically is immortal. She discovers she's immortal. She becomes immortal presumably from some sort of interaction with some chemicals that she encountered while she was fighting alongside the Suicide Squad and basically it has her basically living through different timelines of the DC universe and it's one long uh, dialogue ridden story that has uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't actually have a point. It, it really doesn't have a point. I, I'm not sure why this comic book is, exists at this point. Let's be absolutely clear here that the Legion of Superheroes never appear in this comic book. Uh, this is, I have to say, extremely disappointing. Let me tell you what, what Rosenthorne actually does. It shows her, Rosenthorne, talking in typical Bendis speak. You know, maybe it's because she's schizophrenic, so Bendis feels he can justify his dialogue because on the grounds that she's schizophrenic or has a split personality and her dialogue's supposed to make sense. But once again, it's her rambling on, the typical Bendis speak for the first three pages, just rambling and rambling, talking about she's Rose and Thorn. And she's talking to the pre Madam President of the United States, which is Kara. And this is sometime in the future. Kara looks like an old woman. She's an older, experienced Supergirl, and she happens to be Madam President of the Earth, presumably. We have no idea on the timelines. Bendis has gives the reader no help whatsoever. We have no idea what, what these timelines are. You have to be an experienced DC reader to know, but unfortunately, we know because DC editorials done a horrible job of guiding the DC universe in the re rebirth, we can't take anything for certain, and we know from Bendis's Superman that he doesn't know what he's doing. Bendis has not earned our trust, and he's not given me any indication, particularly with this issue, that he actually knows what he's doing, or that he's even aware how these timelines just don't even make sense, or how they add up, and I'll give you an example of that. Now, they might ultimately add up, but I already know that they won't, because he's lost my faith with Superman and in action comics, and with Event Leviathan. Let me be clear here, Rose and Thorn basically is just immortal, she discovers she's immortal, and she basically has encounters with various people in different timelines. She interacts with uh, Madam President Supergirl. She then, uh, now we don't know when that is, we don't know when in the future that is. It's never identified. She interacts with Terry McGinnis and Batman Beyond. Now we, now I believe that's supposed to be 35 years hence. Uh, she interacts with Commandy, which is linked to the Great Disaster. Commandy, of course, is supposed to be, I believe that was supposed to be 10,000 years hence. She also interacts with Tommy Tomorrow. Now Tommy Tomorrow traditionally was in the 21st century if back, he was, he was a, from an old comic book from 1947 to 1961. I had to Google this. I remember Tommy Tomorrow. I remember uh, there was a reference on the, uh, originally Tommy Tomorrow. Tommy Tomorrow was a character that was linked to Commandy as well because after the original Crisis on Infinite Earths, the Great Disaster was eliminated and taken out of DC history. The Great Disaster was said not to have occurred and Commandy instead became Tommy Tomorrow. In this case, both Commandy and Tommy Tomorrow are characters here. Uh, Tommy Tomorrow being a member of the Planeteers. And so Bendis has all these references, but what he doesn't have, and this is why this really falls apart, and it's just ultimately, it, do, it feels vacuous. It feels like it's gone going nowhere. It's an, a deeply un dissatisfying read is, we just don't know any of the timelines. We don't even know if this is linear. Uh, it doesn't make any sense that Supergirl would be president before Bat the Batman Beyond era of 35 years hence. It doesn't make any sense that Commandy would be uh, before the Legion of Superheroes, before Tommy Tomorrow, uh, those time periods. None of this really makes a lot of sense. 
Bendis doesn't seem concerned uh, concerned with establishing timelines, which is not surprising. In the pages of Young Justice, he doesn't care about the characters. He doesn't care about establishing uh, the, what is actually happening, uh, what is actually happening in their travels through the multiverse. He doesn't really seem to be concerned about the inconsistency there, about how these some of the characters can even exist, like Connor Kent. And I could go on and on and on. This is an absolute mess. And sadly, when you get to the end of this issue, uh, it says next issue it's going to be Legion. Uh, so we're going to meet the Legion of Superheroes. Why should we care? Like, what's the point of this? Are, are, we, are we really supposed to look forward to Ro so Rose and Thorn is going to be a member of the Legion of Superheroes? Who cares? Like, why am I supposed to care about that? Why would I want Rose and Thorn to be a member of the Legion of Superheroes? But you know what? Okay, look, is it going to be an interesting story? I doubt it. Because right now, this sucks. This is not interesting. And, and this is page after page after page of her rambling on. Like, what's the point? And why would I, why would I want to link these different disparate futures of the DC universe? Why do I, because if the present day mainstream DC heroes, what do they have to look forward to? If, if, if the Batman Beyond future is actually on Earth designate zero, and it takes place 35 years from now, that's depressing. That tells me that the present day heroes have failed. The future sucks. If the great disaster is still going to happen, that tells me the future sucks and the heroes have failed. The only thing hopeful to look forward to is the Legion of Superheroes. So why are you including Commandy or Batman or Batman Beyond? They have their own universes. We have the multiverse with 52 Earths, multiversity. Commandy, the great disaster, has his entire Earth all to himself. Why puke him on the Earth designate zero? Why do that? Why not have a little bit of respect for the continuity that has taken decades to build. Why ruin it in one false swoop like this? You know, it's already bad enough that we had, that Jeff Johns had to change, had to rewrite issues 11 and 12 of Doomsday Clock, from what I've been told, in order to confirm with the fact that Legion of Superheroes unfortunately has been introduced in the pages of Superman in an atrociously written, rushed, forced storyline, and they had to age up John Kent to do it. That's bad enough and that we're getting the first appearance of the Justice Society of America. We gotta get it in the pages of Justice League with Scott Snyder, which is fine. Scott Snyder, I love I loved Justice League's entertaining, but think of how much more epic it would have been had we moved toward a rebirth with the fantastic introductions of Justice Society and the Legion of Superheroes in the pages of Doomsday Clock had it not been so bloody well delayed. But no, instead we have this DC millennium. I, I cannot emphasize enough how disappointing this is. I don't really have a lot of nice, I mean, look, was the art okay? Sure, the art's fine. I don't care about the art when the story is this terrible. There's nothing interesting about this. Why should I care? Who's the antagonist, by the way? Who's the protagonist? Is, is Rosenthorn the protagonist? Who's the bad guy? Nobody's even chasing Rosenthorn throughout the, these timelines. What's the big deal? We just have an old redhead with a schizophrenic personality wandering aimlessly through the DC time periods. This isn't interesting. And we, so, and, and, and Bendis doesn't seem to care about uh, identifying, he doesn't tell us a single thing that's interesting about any of this storyline. Why should we care? Where, where, where's the suspense? What's the mystery? What's the central motive behind all this? What's the point? Like, it's just like with the Legion of Superheroes showing up aimlessly and pointlessly at the end of Superman. Why would they show up? At the end of Superman, they just sort of pop up out of nowhere. Why, for Unity Day? Why? It, 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 just, just, just to make a big entrance and take away from what could have been a, a, the ongoing uh, a, a better ending to the Rogel Czar storyline. Anyways, my, my point being is that this is just such a significant miss. The only consolation is that there's one more issue to go with this. I'm not looking forward to it. I have to get this because I'm a DC buff, so I have to know the mess that they're now going to do with DC history. I mean, they... they obviously have no idea what they're doing but we'll see what comes after we'll, we'll see what happens in part two in part two and two of legion of superheroes millennium but i i promise you this i can virtually guarantee you that we will not have a linkage to these various storylines and it will not be adequately explained and it, it shouldn't be we shouldn't have links between these timelines it's a bad idea it was a terrible idea and this is a must miss of a story but you kind of got to get it if you're into DC Universe and you want to be able to make sense of the DC timeline. I, I, you pretty much have to get this. Unfortunately, we have to get it. 
and it's garbage. It's just, this is a huge, huge disappointment. And I'm not gonna talk about the art because I'm tired of great art on garbage stories. This should not have been written. It's that disappointing. Is it bad per se? No, it's just boring. Really boring with a capital B. Boring, boring, boring. I don't know why any of us are supposed to care. And anyways, that's all I got to say about that. So uh, yeah, guys, tell me what you think of uh, <laughs> Legion of Superheroes. Oh, wow. Millennium part one of two. Good grief. I don't know if you want to hit the subscribe button. I, I usually try to be a little bit more positive in this, but DC is not giving us a lot to look forward to. Good God. Um, anyways, guys, sorry to be a downer, but this comic is a, you know, it is what it is. Comic Boom out.